Imagine if I came out here and I attacked a person of color. They would call it racism. If I came out here and I attacked a Jewish person, they would call it anti-Semitism. If I came out here and I attacked a woman, they would call it sexism. If I came out here and I attacked an elderly person, they would call it ageism. If I attacked homosexuality, they would call it intolerance. If I came out here and I attacked any religion, they would call it hate speech. But when they attacked Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they called it freedom of speech. Now, I have a problem with this whole freedom of speech thing. Because most of the Americans, they don't understand what freedom of speech is. And so I think it's very important that we discuss what freedom of speech is, how it can be used, and what the responsibility behind freedom of speech is. So we'll start off with a definition of what freedom of speech is. Freedom of speech is defined as the political right to communicate one's opinions and ideas without fear of harm from the government or those in power. Now, the founding forefathers of this country, okay, they left Britain, right, England. They left England and they came here to America because of religious oppression and persecution and also taxation without representation. That is why they came here. Now, these people, the people in power in Britain, were oppressing them. They wouldn't allow them to gather. They wouldn't allow them to talk against the government and come up with a new way. So they left. So the very first amendment that they made to the Constitution when they ratified it into law was freedom of speech. Now, this was designed to protect the human beings so they could go ahead and gather and have differences of opinion without fear of persecution and harm. Now, we can see this in the early days how this was tested. Now, it didn't mean that you could have freedom of speech unconditionally, that you could talk and talk and talk and do whatever you want, because in the very beginning, they tried to limit the power of freedom of speech. And I'll give you a perfect example. Anybody here know Benjamin Franklin? Yes. His grandson, Benjamin Franklin Bach, he ran a newspaper called the Philadelphia Aurora. Anyhow, he wrote an article about General George Washington and John Adams, which was the first president and the second president or the first elected president. He wrote an article saying that both of these people were on the side of the British. Very controversial at the time. John Adams ordered him arrested and he passed a law called the Alien and Sedition Act which basically said anybody that tries to overthrow the government can be arrested and can be held indefinitely. This was some of the very first ground rules to the terrorism laws that we have today. Okay? So it's important to understand that they didn't say freedom unconditionally, absolute freedom. With this freedom comes great responsibility. Now, we also have to look at freedom of expression because sometimes they use the two interchangeably. So. Freedom of expression is any act of seeking, receiving, and imparting information or, ide or ideas regardless of the medium that is used. In practice, the right to freedom of speech is not absolute in any country, and the right is subject to limitation as with libel, slander, obscenity, sedition, including inciting ethnic hatred. And I say that with ethnic hatred because this is exactly what this film was designed for. Now. Now that we understand freedom of speech, we need to understand the position of the U.S. government and the White House. Because they said some amazing things. President Barack Obama, he came out and he said that, Google, you need to take down that video because it's causing a lot of problems. Then he quickly retracted because the conservative groups in this country, they wanted his head on a platter because they said that he is violating the freedom of speech. Because most Americans don't know what freedom of speech is and they don't know how it is used. So. White House Press Secretary Jay Carney, he stressed that the White House was not asking for it to be removed, only to be reviewed. Only to be reviewed to see if it fell under their rules. Now, despite asking for such review, Carney insisted, we cannot and will not squelch freedom of expression in this country. So in other words, he's saying, you have the green light, this is part of freedom of expression. Okay? Now, this is interesting because this, there's also a Supreme Court Justice. His name is Justice Napolitano. He applauded the decision of Google. He said, I'm very happy that Google didn't take it down. Not because I want to see this kind of riots going on, but because mature, intelligent people should be able to view this thing and decide for themselves whether this caused the riots or whether it is the pretext for the start of these riots. 
So again, I'm going to ask you, does a five-year-old girl that comes to my class need to know whether this video is a pretext for the cause of these riots? Because the majority of the people that watch this were kids. They got this demographics on YouTube. You can go look at it by age. Now, he's also saying that only mature, intelligent people can watch this. So he's basically saying that Muslims are not mature and they're not intelligent. It's called English doublespeak. I love how it works. Okay? Now, this is the attitude of the White House and the Justice Department before this. Now, it's important to understand also, when this happened, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton spent $70,000 to run ads in Pakistan in the Urdu language to go ahead and stop this film from going over there. So why would they take $70,000 of our tax dollars to go spend on trying to stop this thing? Now, we also have to take a look at YouTube and Google because they refused to take this video down. They said, we are not taking this down. This is freedom of speech. This is freedom of expression. So I started searching through YouTube's policies and procedures. Now, YouTube in section seven, they talk about account termination policy. Now they say YouTube reserves the right to decide what content violates these terms of service for reasons other than copyright infringement such as but not limited to pornography, obscenity, or excessive length. YouTube may at any time without prior notice and in its sole discretion remove such content or terminate a user's account for submitting such material that violates these terms of service. So basically what they're saying is that we don't answer to no one. We have the whole entire discretion on whether we cancel something or not. Now they also have community guidelines that we're supposed to all live by, right? These are the rules of the game so nobody gets their feelings hurt, right? So, they say, we encourage free speech and defend everyone's right to express unpopular points of view, but we don't permit hate speech, speech which attacks or demeans a group based on race, ethnic origin, religion, disability, gender, age, veteran status, and sexual orientation or gender identity. So, I ask every one of you, does it fall under one of those categories? That film? Yes. yes. No matter how you package it, no matter how you spin it, no matter how Fox News presents it, okay, it is the same. It falls under the same ugly head of hate speech. Now, they also say something down a little farther called dangerous illegal acts. While it may not seem fair to say you can't show something because of what viewers theoretically might do in response, we draw the line at content that is intended to incite violence, encourage dangerous, illegal activities that have an inherent risk of serious physical harm or even death. Now, this means not posting videos on things like instructional bomb making, uh, videos that train terrorists, ninja assassins, sniper attacks, illegal street, street racing. Any depiction like these should be educational or documentary and shouldn't be designed to help or encourage others to imitate them. So, it's amazing in their own rule books, they sit there and state that this kind of behavior is not allowed on their medium of videos. Yet, they chose to go ahead and leave it posted on there, out of their own decision. Now, uh, also, we have to understand too that YouTube has to follow state and federal guidelines, okay? There is a media group on there called Es Sahab, Es Sahab is the media wing of Al Qaeda. Okay, they post their videos on YouTube. Okay, now YouTube goes ahead and leaves on their Arabic version of videos, but within two to four days, they pull down the English versions of their videos. It says this video has been pulled down because of its content. So they exercise their right to go ahead and pull down that sort of free speech, but when it comes to inciting violence towards Muslims, this is allowable. And so I find this as an oxymoron. I'm not saying whether it is good or bad for removing these videos, but what I'm saying is if you're going to do it one way, you might as well do it the other way also. 